So we've arrived at Junction 12. Uh, it's a brand new lake for me. Had a little wander around uh, about, you know, for about an hour and uh, it's very, very gin clear. You can see all the little stones of pebbles, even, even eight foot down, you can see, you know, you see these clear spots in the edges. And as I stood there, I had four or five carp go past me in one swim. Another swim, there was more carp. So it was apparent, I went and grabbed some pellet and uh, I've, I've distributed in about five different little spots. And uh, had a little walk around, sort of only half an hour in, and two of the spots they've got fish going on them. And uh, so rather than sit here and, and, and you know peg up in a swim, finding spots, I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to grab my rod and I'm going to get out and see if we can catch one on these Junction 12 carp. Okay, buzzing. Uh, I've got round to uh, round to the other side of the lake. This is one of the spots that I've. I primed earlier and uh, I had a couple of big fish in there and a few smaller ones. It was right near the motorway. Uh, obviously there's quite a lot of noise going on, they're extending the motorway to four lanes as you can hear. Uh, the fish don't seem to be bothered by it but I'm still going to go in stealthily, go and give it a bash for half a round and see if we can winkle one of these out. I've just got back here and at the moment there's one shooting through the swim at the moment but he's high up. He's uh, He's not even, uh, he's nowhere near the bottom. They were right here, right on the edge of the reeds there, feeding. He's shooting really quick, that fish there. I think he's uh, super spooky, one of the stockies probably. But it's difficult to, uh, it's difficult to see now. I think they've, uh, they've definitely, uh, looks like they've done a bit of the off. There was five or six here earlier. I'm sure they'll be back. But I might have to, uh, I might have to go in and have a look at the other spot. This is going to be a. Uh... <laughs> right, this is a little bit hairy. I should have actually, uh, I should have bought my CQ rod, but I bought the main rod because most of them were open water. Um, you know, this, the, the swim was open, but this is the only one where it's covered with trees. And, uh, but hey ho, it's all a good bit of fun. Putting the fish in no damage at all. But it's gonna be a bit tricky getting it out there. Looks like it's just one of the stockies, but we'll take that. We will take that. What a start. That will do. This is a knit one pearl one. I'm literally, I'm up to my, uh, really up to my knee in silk. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. There you go, it's only a little... Uh... <laughs> you saw that. There we go. It's in there. That'll do. Lovely. That will do. Gorgeous little uh, little zipplin, black as your hat. <laughs> Got to try and get out of here now. <laughs>
there we go. It's an uh, absolute banging little carp. It's, uh, it's obviously it's not one of the big ones, but we'll take that. For all the preparation and uh, probably 14, 15 minutes in the water and a uh, hairy little sort of uh, in the bushes job. Stupidly, I use a 12 foot rod, so it was a little bit, uh, little bit of knit and weave, and, uh, but yeah, absolute banging, real dark, lovely zip linear. And uh, yeah, well chuffed for that. That will do indeed for a starter. See if we can go and get one of the big ones. Well, pretty tough for that little fish. Um, come around to another spot, baited up, like say, six or seven spots. And uh, we've just got, I was gonna walk back to the swim, sort of, a, you know, left the car in, and have a little lead about, but I've just walked past and uh, I had a little sneaky peek in this one. And uh, I've seen two, they were definite 30s, come up from this sort of deep hole. It looks about 10 foot. Uh, when I put the pellet out there this morning, I could see it was like gravel. And they've just come up from that, so it's, uh, I think it's going to be worth uh, giving it an hour before uh, before I sort of go and have a little lead about ready for the night, and uh, just drop a drop another, not exactly the same rig, little bag on the end, and um, just see whether we can pull out one of the bigger fish. Uh, that's the plan. Right, well, time's of the essence. I think I've given that long enough. It's, uh, it's been down there half an hour. There's some um, fish sort of zipping through the swim, but they're not, they're not sort of, they're not getting down and feeding. So, uh, and I've seen plenty of fish out here. So I think the plan of attack is to go and get the car and get set up for the night. We've got to find some spots yet, you know, so uh, we're running out of time. And uh, I think that's, uh, you know, we've given the stalker a fair old, uh, fair old go. But it's been quite successful, you know, first, first time on the lake. I was quite happy with that. Would have been nice to be a 30, but see if we can get one tonight. Well, I found a, found a little spot. They st I was told about a plateau out there, about 70 yards. Um, there's a couple of nice areas there, um, but I found close in, but it's only sort of five and a quarter wraps. It's absolutely like a, it's like a billiard table. It's as smooth as anything. It's definitely either it's either a patrol route on the on the drop down. Um, you pull into a little bit of weed, but it's absolutely smooth. So I've I've leaded that about ten times. I'm going to fish over a little bar. I've seen them. They've been on there all day. Um, so it's only about eighteen inches deep. But I'll come this side of the bar, so I don't have my line. Hopefully, get it on the drop off. And uh, I, I don't know. That's probably that's going to be about sort of fourteen wraps. I think maybe maybe twelve. So we'll have a little look. There's a fish there right now on the bar. They're liking that. They're liking that on top of there. <laughs> That's landed right on it. That literally took about half a second to drop. That'd be bumpy. There you go. It's all on the gra That's on the gravel bar. Right on it. Coming off the bottom of it. I can feel that going down now. It's a fish just roll just to the right of that. <laughs> That's just, they're definitely liking that little area there. So coming out a little bit further than I thought. That's it, we're off of it.
So we've got to my favourite part of the uh, part of the day. We've done a bit of stalking, which is awesome, lovely. But I like to get set behind the rods, finding an area, which I've done. I've come back, I've found three absolutely, well, in my eyes, they're banging areas. They might not be, we'll soon find out by the morning. Um, I've got one at five and a half wraps, one at nine and three quarter wraps, one at 14 and a half wraps. And they're just off the end of the bar, which I didn't want to be up on the bar. I didn't want to be in shallow water. Um, the fish are fizzing, I've seen them fizzing, but they're fizzing off the sides of the bars. So uh, I've literally had a little lead about, pulled into some, some smooth areas, but I'm still feeling little bumps on the, uh, on the areas that I've, I've, I've done. And they are nailed. So, uh, so all we're gonna do, we're gonna deposit three rigs. And all I'm doing is putting a little bag on just to, uh, it's not really for attraction, but it does help. But all I'm, all I'm doing is putting three, uh, three rigs out there, basic complicated rigs with bags pulled into the hook link pulled into the hook sorry and that covers the hook just on the cast so if there is any sort of detritus on the bottom leaves weed it's uh it just alleviates that problem so uh i actually can't wait to sit back and relax behind the rods and just take in the evening i'm gonna have a lovely barbecue in a minute once i've deposited the rods and here we go it's ready done ready tied, ready clipped, so uh, let's go and get one out. Uh, fish number three. I've had four bites. It's a frantic little morning spell. She's in the net. Get in there. It's another one of the, uh, the, the small stockies. But we'll take that. I've got a nice one in the net. Nice lever. Right, here we go again. <laughs> Bit of a problem here. We've got, uh, we've got one in each net. It uh, definitely seems to be the, uh, the trigger zone in the morning. They, uh, I was told they, uh, they only feed, <laughs> they only feed really um, in the daytime. It's another one, I think it's another one of these, the stockies again. What I don't want to do here, I don't want to lose that nice, uh, that nice lever out of there, but I'm gonna have to put them in that net. Right, just been past another net. <laughs> it's uh so it doesn't fall apart this time. Beauty. That's it. There we go. That's three nets filled.
Absolute carnage this morning. Every carp angler's dream. Loads of bites, loads of fish in the nets, but I'm not fishing. I haven't got any rods in, so as lovely as the two little stockies are, I'm going to release them, let them go, get the rods back in the water, and then we're going to take a look at that beautiful lever. Right, here we go. Beautiful leather. Great old character, bent over dorsal. Reminds me of the old uh, Royal Park Lake fish. That little bit of dorsal on it, tiny little tail. Stunning colours, absolutely beautiful. Um, the best thing is, they're getting bigger. So uh, hopefully, we'll have a bigger one to show you in a bit. Yeah, chuff for that. So I'm sat here contemplating, like all anglers do. We all have different perceptions of what we want to catch. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had a procession of, of, of the smaller carp, and I know there's big ones in here. Shooting and filming in the, in the summer can often be, you either get it really right, or, or you, you, know, you, you get the, the weather can play havoc with the fishing, and uh, especially the bigger fish. It's high pressure, it's 1,035 millibar, which is really, it's difficult for a big carp, you know, they, they, they get uncomfortable, they, they have to adjust the swim bladder, it's almost, you can relate it to us having a stomachache, they kind of, they feel uncomfortable with it, I think the smaller fish, the smaller fish can deal with it a lot easier, and, uh, and that's why we're catching them, which is great, I mean, they've been fantastic carp, and, and, and I've had a really great time, um, but, you know, just to, just to put one, to slip the net under one of these big ones, all I can do is keep trying, and, uh, you know, and I, I, I I've changed the methods from, you know, I was using the acrylic active as a hook bait, and I know it all sort of crumbles all the way around the sort of the centre core of the bait. It's very attractive, but I think it's getting instant bites. And what I'm trying to do is just slow the process down using the krill 20 mil straight out the bag. And normally that's 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 caught me. It's singled out the bigger fish, so that's that's my thought process and what I'm doing now. So let's get this rod back out. Um, fingers crossed, we don't know what's, what's going to come next, but that's all part of the fishing and I'm loving it.
into another one. Uh, that's the rod we just spoke about. Just put it back out. I was just uh, depositing some more 20 uh, mil grill over the top. And I started getting a few liners, and they literally, I was getting liners as I think the boilies were dropping, and uh, it's gone off again. So I don't know, I can never tell. Never tell what, um, what size they are, but it doesn't. It doesn't feel massive. He's coming right along the margin here. But he's enough, uh, he's enough to put up a scrap in here. It's been absolutely brilliant fun. Just picking up the other line. <coughs> he's got to be ready now, surely. Just, uh, we won't waste no time, we're going to get that back straight back out. Eventually, it's going to it's gonna be one of these big girls. Just going through uh, what he's been eating. He's been eating snails, you can feel them all ground up. Tadpoles, uh, krill, <laughs> and silt. So he's had a right old diet there. There we go. One of Dell's little babies. Absolute gorgeous. The colours of these fish are unreal. I think that's due to the clarity and the, you know, the, the quality of the water. But yeah, imagine that at 40 pounds. That's going to be uh, one amazing fish. Absolutely cracking. Having a great time this morning. But uh, we know what's coming, hopefully. <laughs> so we slip her back. Beautiful fish. found a little hidey hole. Kind of looks like the Holy Grail. Um, it's the first time I've seen a group of bigger fish. Although there's smaller fish with them, but there's a group of about four big fish. There's one that looks at least 40 pound. <coughs> and uh, I'm gonna have to creep through. You won't be able to see a lot. And uh, hopefully just drop one into this little hole that I've seen. It all depends. I mean, they are coming right in close, but I don't want to fish too close in. A little bit precarious with the reeds there. So, uh, so I'm just gonna go and drop it in and uh, see if we can catch one. Try and uh, just underarm it a little bit unless I can get out a bit further. Few of the krill active, about, about six of them. They've put them in half and they've gone in really quietly. There's still some fish milling there, and that, that I 
I couldn't position that any better. That was absolutely bomb on. Gonna be a bit quiet. It's just been down the other swim. It wasn't really happening down there. And uh, I sent Dan down to have a look at this spot that I've baited up for, well, it's been, been for sort of 36 hours. Now they're finally in there. There's two big ones in there. So uh, we're gonna stick a rod in, see what happens. Hopefully we'll nail one of these big fish. Well, there you go. It's the beauty of having a few of us here. I baited this spot yesterday. I came round him earlier, about two hours. And, uh, and that's Dan. Dan, bless him, came and had a look for me while we were up in the other spot. And uh, he said, there's two lumps. I've never seen Dan run before. There was two lumps down here. He's literally been out about two minutes. It certainly don't look like a stocky at the minute. And she is not in the net. This is our 30 pounder here, definitely. She's in, get in. Yes. Oh, yes. 24 hours of Chasing the 30, that doesn't sound a lot. I know a lot of people fish a long time for a 30, but when you're under pressure, and that was the target, coming here especially, and we've bloody done it. Get in there. Roy, well, this is the face of a happy man. Uh, as I say, we've only been here 24 hours, but it's a bit, a bit tormenting for me, frustrating, um, because you know, I've always known this lake as a big fish water and uh, banging out lots of these lovely stockies, but realistically you come, you know, you do some filming, you've come for a 30 and uh, we know it's going to be, we know it's going to be tough because it's, it's high pressure. The, the big fish are just really not interested. So we knew it was all the little dolly holes, you know, little tiny little spots in the edges. And, uh, and I've walked this lake now. My, my phone says 10,000 steps normally a day. And I reckon I've done about 40,000 steps since I've been here because I've walked and walked and baited and baited and baited. And this little spot didn't come to fruition until today. And we saw it this morning, a couple of smaller fish there. And uh, I sent Dan down here to have a look. And he said, there's two big ones on the spot. And uh, so we, I was having an hour and we were to come out of that spot we just done because that took, that was just perfection. That was perfection. That would have gone off. But when he said there's two big ones here and one of them's a scaly one, like, you know, and uh, boom, we got her in the net. So oh, I'm ecstatic. Um, so yeah, I feel it's a bit of a, a bit of a team effort as well, like, you know, because uh, we're all so excited. We catching the smaller ones is great and it's all great for footage and filming and whatever. But, you know, I've been a big fish angler for a long, long time. So you always want to catch a big one. You know? and I've come to a new lake and within 24 hours, I've, I think it might be mid 30, I don't know.
the size of that. <laughs> that ain't bad in a uh, three foot of water. Absolutely, absolutely uh, nailed in the scissors. What's designed to do, look at that, bam. No damage at all, brilliant. Right, moment of truth. Here we go. Oh, fantastic, look at that, 36. Just tipping over two to four, 36. We say it's 36 two. Fantastic. Wow. Look at that. That's uh, I paid dividends that has. Baited that spot, walked this lake, well, it's about 15, 20 acres, walked it five, six times. I see the spot yesterday. A little carrier bag spot I'm calling it. And I uh, put some bait there, pellet. See a couple of smaller ones. And uh, see a small one there to this morning. And uh, Tom and Dan have been down and seen, uh, seen a few bigger fish. And this was one of them. And uh, yeah, catch that in three foot of water from two foot from the bank. It's, uh, yeah, it's incredible. So uh, yeah, well chuffed for that. And like I said in the earlier, every carp trip is a story. And here she is. Let's call her my carrier bag story. Fantastic. All right, there we go. Look at that. What a result. That's, uh, yeah, chuffed. Dead chuffed for that. That's uh, having to think about things, you know? And uh, it's, it's just come it's just come to fruition. Just uh, having to, you know, you win the fort in three foot of water, big old unit like this, two foot from the bank. But that's what you can produce. Happy days. Well chuffed for that. We'll just get her back now. This is the rig I decided to use on this venue. I knew that the water's gin clear. I'm using fluorocarbon. It's perfect for gin clear waters. This is called the Basic Complicated Rig. It's a rig I come up with 20, 22 years ago. It's basic to make. I can literally knock one of these up in about a minute. The idea behind this is a very aggressive hook, and that's what makes it complicated for a carp to deal with. If you take a, you know, an average 20, 25, 30 pound carp, the way they have to feed, they dip down, then they make themselves go horizontal. They have to, because all the food will fall out of their mouths otherwise, to go back to the throat teeth. So the idea of this, they pick it up, up they go, and I've worked out over the years, a 30 pounder, you want it about, you want it about nine inches. That's perfect. It seems to hook them about an inch back. In, in the, uh, it hooks in the scissors. The idea behind this is, is it's invisible, and one key point is using a ring swivel which we've got on there. If you tie that straight to the swivel, that will literally do that and it could end up sat like that. So you need a ring swivel, it's very important on that. And all I use straight the way through is a lead clip, tail rubber, and I use quite a heavy fluorocarbon line. And uh, all you can see, even in gin clear water, we, our, our eyesight's better than the carps. And we can, all you can see is the tail rubber and, and that's about it, and sometimes the lead. So, you know, fishing on gin clear water in the summer, this is the rig I use basically from spring right the way through till October. And then I'll switch over to the wivy when the carp become more lethargic, but they're feeding in a much more enthusiastic way. So this rig has caught me so many big carp, but it's the easiest rig you could ever make. Just start off literally taking off, I use 0 0.40 fluorocarbon, take off about 14 inches. Next, all you do is to make a small overhand loop to form the hair. Then you put on a 20 mil boilie. This is what I use. I always use them straight out of the packet. It's a bottom bait. It works better rather than it wafting about. So 20 mil straight down and then put a little boilie stop just to hold the, obviously the boilie in place. A very important element with this particular rig is that you use a hook with an outturned eye. If you use a hook with a straight eye, 
or an interned eye, just because of the properties of fluorocarbon, it can become a bit brittle. If you hook a big carp, it's put under pressure. I've had it many years ago. 20, it, took me, it took me about a year to work out why I was getting snaps on the, on the hook link. And uh, if you haven't got the outturned eye, just literally, it will, it will snap, you know, right down near the hook. So it's a very, very important element. I also use quite small hooks. Even with a 20 mil boilie, I'm using a size seven. A big hook, I find personally that they can dislodge that a lot easier than a small hook. I find once the small hook's in, they find it a lot more difficult to, to get rid of. Anyway, back to the tie-in. So you take your, your fluorocarbon, and it's quite an important part of this, is that you take the fluorocarbon through the back of the eye. If you take it through the front, the hook won't, it won't hang right at all. So it's quite important, then you slide the hook down, just so the bend of the hook just touches the boilie. And then I do three turns, holding it with my left hand, because I'm right-handed, I hold it there, and then I do three turns around the, the hair. And then I drop the hair, and then do six turns around the bottom part of the hair. And then the most important part is that then you take the hook link back through the back of the eye. And then literally, you can just ease it up, pull the hair up, pull the whole knot up, hold it, because fluorocarbon needs to get its, find its memory, you just hold it for sort of 20 seconds, and then you'll, you'll see that it grips. Everything's closed up together, bend the hair back, and you, you'll, you'll notice that the hook sits very aggressively, and that's the whole point of this rig. And uh, another important thing, once I tie on, I use a four-turn grinner knot with, uh, with fluorocarbon, and I tie it onto the ring swivel. It has to be onto a ring swivel, because if you tie it onto just a normal swivel, it can do that, and it will stay there. Sometimes it will stay there. If it sits in a little bit of silt, it will just stay like a little loop. So with a, with a ring swivel, it does that, and the, and, and the hook link will, will drop, like so. So it's just those little elements, that little extra 10% will give you a lot more, a lot more pickups and, and takes, and the fish won't, you know, it won't be spooked off of it or, or feel there's something wrong, you know, in its, in its own environment. So that's basically the basic complicated rig. So I've made a tactical change tonight. I've gone all out for a, a big girl off the bottom. And uh, what I'm gonna use is my old faithful round stringer. Something I've used for many, many years with boilies. And uh, it's, it's, it's a really tricky one for a carp to get, to get its head round. Especially, uh, you can't actually tell the hook, which one the hook bait is. And uh, the hook bait sits in the middle. You've got an invisible hook link. Basically, I'm using the 20 mil krill. Put five of these on a piece of uh, PVA tape. You slide them down. Be careful not to slide them too close together because the water sometimes, if you've got them too tight, the water doesn't penetrate and it takes a little bit longer for that to actually dissolve. But yeah, put five of these on and uh, it's definitely a big fish method. I've, I've used it on, on magazine features over the last bloody 20 years, you know, and it's, uh, it's always done me big fish. So that's what we're going in for tonight. I've sort of got rid of the, uh, the, the little um, mesh bags of pellet, because um, I just seem to be, you know, I don't know, they often say like smaller carp and, and bream and stuff, and they love the pellet. So uh, the lads have said here today, like, you know, Steve, get rid of the pellet. And I thought about it, and I thought, well, we've done 24 hours, we've had a good day, and uh, but tonight, it's the last night, so uh, we're coming into, you know, little little round stringer, then your hook bait sits in the middle, I think a carp comes along, he can't work out which one the hook bait is. I think process denomination, he just takes the whole lot in, makes himself go horizontal, hooks the fish, and hopefully it's a big one. So uh, we're gonna put this out tonight, and uh, we'll see what happens overnight, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll have a forty pounder on the bank. You never know.
Right, just dropping into the, uh, the evening. The, uh, the sun's gone down. It's literally, I've got the three rods back positioned, but what a day. Any car bangler would be like, pleased with the day that I've had today. Best alarm clock ever, four o'clock in the morning. They started on about 11 bites this morning and uh, then decided to go off and try and pick a, a bigger fish. And uh, that, that really, really works. Um, you know, I'm actually over the moon with a, catching a fish from two foot from the bank, 36 pounder. What a beautiful fish. And it's, uh, I've still got tonight to go. So, uh, you know, every carp angler's dream, have a 36 if I can get one off the bottom tonight on the on the main rods and uh, that's that's been a fantastic trip um, so yeah I'm just looking forward to tonight The middle rod has finally, finally gone. That's been out there since last night. I put that out there, I don't know, about eight o'clock last night, maybe. And uh, it's taken till nine the next day. So it's 13 hours been sat in the water and it's gone off with a, it's definitely one of, uh, one of the good ones. But she's, uh, she's definitely found herself a little weed bed out there. It's going in and out, in and out. But just keep steady pressure on her and uh, hopefully she'll come free. Well, I managed to get her out of that weed bed, which was a, a, bit, a bit of a scary moment. She's uh, now kited all the way to my, uh, to my right. Little prediction, this is a lump. Got herself in the, I think she's in the reeds down there. She's out. That will do, she's out. She's trying to make her way to the other set now. Right, she's, she's li literally down here. She's, she's there. <laughs> that is what we came for. I saw that one in the, in the snags yesterday and I commented to uh, Dale, the owner, or the manager, I said there's one with three scales on it, and there she is in the net. Yes! Unreal. I've come to the end of uh, my 48 hours at this beautiful lake and a uh, little change of tactics, what we've what we shown you with the round stringer. I went literally just round stringers, always a big fish method and uh, especially I was using the pellet, I was catching the smaller ones. But then we ended up with this one, literally on the 47th hour, which is fantastic. Can't ask for better than that. She's weighed in at obviously 36.4. Uh, what a stunning creature, oh, absolutely blown away. What an end, really, really, really pleased with this one. Fantastic, definitely be coming back to this place. Junction 12, it's, uh, yeah, it's proper angling. Lovely stuff.